Now at 11, a man killed after what police are calling a shootout near downtown Indy. What we know tonight about this investigation. We've had some really nice weather for over a week now, but a big cold front's on the way to bring us frostier and cloudier weather. We'll track it for you. Plus, Hoosiers opening their hearts after Hurricane Helene. Meet one couple giving up their vacation to offer a helping hand. Live from Indy, you're watching 13 News. We start tonight with the investigation into a shootout near the campus of IU Indy. One person killed, another injured. Metro police calling this a running gun battle, and it ended near a restaurant just north of downtown. Our Anna Chalker was at the scene this morning and shares what we know so far. Well, the crime scene here Saturday morning took over a large section of Indiana Avenue. When we first arrived on scene, we saw police and crews cleaning shattered glass past this intersection. Then to the right, homicide investigators closer to the Papa John's. But the most significant damage happening in the front of the Taco Bell. Instead of opening to customers, employees spent Saturday morning cleaning up glass from where their doors and window were shot out. One employee tells 13 News everyone inside was okay when the shooting happened, but are shaken up. Investigators believe this all started as a shootout between two vehicles near IU Indianapolis's campus. Yeah, it looks like we have some shell casings uh, starting off of uh, right here at Indiana Avenue and 10th Street. Around 315, Metro Police say a man and woman were shot on Indiana Avenue. Both were taken to the hospital. The woman was last reported as stable. The man was in critical condition, then later died. When our crew was on scene, we saw one of the vehicles involved in the shootout get towed away. Public police reports show two guns were taken at the scene, and right now it's unclear how many people were involved in this shooting. As police continue their investigation, they urge anyone with information or even security camera footage to reach out to them. You can call them at Crime Stoppers at 317 262 TIPS. In Indianapolis, Anna Chalker, 13 News. Metro police are investigating another deadly shooting, this one on the northwest side. Officers were called to Scarlet Drive near 34th and Moeller just after 2.30 a.m. because of a loud party. But when they got there, someone flagged them down saying a man had been shot. Police found the victim near a garage. He died at the scene. Now Metro police are asking anybody with information to contact Crime Stoppers. Remember, you don't have to give your name. Just call 317-262-TIPS. Now to a hit and run crash downtown that injured three people this afternoon, one of them in critical condition. This happened near East Ohio Street and North College Avenue just after 4 p.m. Medics took three adults to the hospital. Police say the vehicle that hit them drove off and the crash happened just feet away from where dozens of shoppers and vendors were out at the Six Ways Street Market. And I heard the crash. It was like really loud. Yeah. And the first instance, I thought that the booth got hit and it was just a really scary situation. I just have family in EMS, so it's just all about staying calm and uh, um, getting this, you know, getting the situation solved and people out of the way. So again, three people hurt here. If you can help identify the car or driver from that hit and run, call Crime Stoppers 317-262-TIPS. Tonight, fire investigators are looking for the cause of a huge fire at an abandoned church on Indy's near west side. Got to take a look at this video. My goodness, you can see a huge plume of smoke and flames shooting up. This was as firefighters were approaching the building this morning. The church itself was engulfed in fire. You can see that here. Now, this was reported around 7 a.m. on King Avenue near West Walnut and North Holmes. At least five fire trucks helped put this fire out. IFD says this is actually the second fire at this same building. The first was back in April of 2020. 1110 and let's talk weather now. Hopefully you enjoyed the day today. Warm weather, which we've been experiencing for quite a while, but I know a lot of people are saying, gosh, when are we going to feel fall? Yeah, it's been a while. It has. Like. It's coming. It is coming. Growing up in the Great Lakes, how do you feel when I say the word lake effect? 
Ooh, yeah, that, not a good feeling. I, I get a little. <laughs> <laughs> I think of a lot of snow. Yeah, yeah. We're not getting that. We're not getting that. Okay. But we are getting lake effect rain showers. Oh, interesting. Yes, yeah, so, because it's still warm enough, but you can still kind of get the same process. So we're going to be watching that. We haven't okay. had anything like that in a while. Uh, this is going to be the strongest cold weather pattern we've had so far this season. And it is marching in later tonight and into your Sunday. In fact, there's kind of two cold fronts. This one's the main one, but there's a reinforcing shot of some cooler air up to the north. So these fronts come through starting tomorrow. We're going to be a little bit cooler tomorrow, but still comfortable in some low 70s rather than closer to 80 where we were today. Got some rain shower chances too, but as they're going over these lake water temperatures, which are still in the mid 60s on Lake Michigan, Lake Michigan is going to start producing some lake effect clouds and a couple of misty showers out there uh, going into your Sunday night and Monday and Tuesday. It's going to get kind of dreary around here, so we're tracking not only the cooler weather, but also some misty showers as well. And in the middle of next week, we may be cold enough, Jenny, to get our first frost, and maybe even some freeze out there across central Indiana. We'll show you who has the best chance of either of those coming up. Oof, all right, we will we'll check back. Matt, thank you. Tonight in Florida, more than it's a million surreal. people are without power as recovery continues from Hurricane Milton. That number was as high as 3.4 million right after Milton made landfall. Crews are now working to clear debris from roads and power lines and flooding sadly prompted several rescues today, especially Mother along Nature the Hillsborough River bay. in and Tampa. More than 16 areas. inches of rain fell there. President Biden expected to visit some of the hardest hit areas tomorrow. Meanwhile, Hoosiers are opening their hearts to people in North Carolina who were impacted by Hurricane Helene. From the Red Cross to a couple who canceled their anniversary trip to help those who lost everything. Our Marina Silva shares their mission. Videos and pictures show the devastation that hit North Carolina during Hurricane Helene. Now, Hoosiers want to help. Kyle and Courtney and McClintock were set to go to Nashville, Tennessee to celebrate their two-year wedding anniversary. But instead, they went to Waynesville, North Carolina to help. Because I have skills fixing saws and sharpening. And I Googled um, who was fixing chainsaws in Asheville, North Carolina, and came across the group uh, WNC Repair Cafe. While Kyle was helping repair chainsaws, his wife Courtney was right beside him sharpening. I didn't do much because I don't know much about repair, but he had me uh, sharpening the chainsaws. He set me up on the sharpener and showed me how to do it, and I sharpened them for him. The couple says where they are, they see a lot of damage. A lot of flood damage. A lot of debris washed everywhere, houses flooded, and people just trying to clean up. Other organizations like the American Red Cross have been in North Carolina helping out as well. Terry Stigden volunteers with the Red Cross. She's been in North Carolina since the beginning of the month to help. We have people that have been here since the shelter opened. We have um, lots of people that have been able to start over and find their next step. So they've left the shelter. And we have new people coming in. She's a nurse, so she's also helping take care of people's health. But she says listening to the stories people have about their lives gives her hope. I don't have the, the words to express how amazing it is to interact with these people. If anything, it just reminds me of everything I have to be grateful for. Hoosiers opening their hearts to those who need it most. Reporting in Indianapolis, Marina Silva, 13 News. Still ahead tonight, preventing fires with education. See how IFD used a fall festival to ensure people understand some very important lessons. Matt? Hey, Jenny, much colder air is coming into central Indiana. It's going to give us some misty showers next couple of days and also our first chance for a frost or freeze. We're going to let you know how cold it's about to get. Oof, so but first, with that colder weather coming, how about a trip to the beach? Maybe sign me up. We'll tell you some destinations offering bargains right now. That's next.